Hey guys, Tang with Fox Airsoft here, and today we're gonna to talk about the ASG Scorpion Evo series. This is not a review, it's a know your platform video, so we're gonna explain all the little quirks and how to get it running and all the little controls that you need to know when you become an Evo owner. Uh, today I have the Evo BET suppressed carbine here, but this also applies to the uh, SMG model as well as the carbine model. Starting with what kind of battery do you need? This is one of those advanced guns that requires strictly an 11.1 LiPo. If you're in the American market, that's the requirement of the MOSFET here. It won't run otherwise, so you have to use a LiPo battery. No Nikomoto hydrides, unfortunately. Uh, with that said, the type of battery you're gonna use is an 11.1 stick type. All these guns come pre deans from the factory. If you have an earlier one, they might have different requirements on the MOSFET as well as the standard Tamiya plug, but all the current production Evos will have the Dean's plug and require the 11.1. If you try anything less, it won't power or it'll really suffer in performance and then cut you off uh, electronically. And with that, since I said it's a more advanced gun, you have to take care with your LiPos, not only just from using a LiPo, but um, do not leave the battery plugged in while you're not using the gun because the MOSFET, and this is true of all MOSFETs, it'll passively drain that battery because it's using some electricity to uh, run the electronics to sense all that stuff. So if you leave it plugged in, you'll over discharge your LiPo and then that LiPo will become useless. So uh, we do not warranty that and we recommend you be very careful about that. And we'll start with uh, talking about some of the controls here. You have the charging handle on the left side here, but it's ambidextrous and can be interchanged to the right side. You can pull the charging handle back and it should lock back the bolt automatically. And then on the other side, there is a manual bolt release. So when you press that down, it closes the fake bolt. Once that's open, you'll see a little dial here. That's for the hop up adjustment. So you can turn that little thing there or you can plug in a little hex key and that should also work. This won't close without you pressing the button and the charging handle stays sprung back until you actually release it. Now, unlike the HK series where the charging handle could shear off just from banging the front there, uh, the Evo, they designed it with that in mind so that you can use it the way that you can use it like the real thing. So when you release it, it'll go forward, but there's a little spring in here that acts as a shock absorber. So this will be very durable and you can use this feature as much as you like. You can also lock the charging handle in the up position for whatever reason. So uh, depressing this won't actually close the bolt. and this is gonna be sprung two ways. So the Evo is equipped with a couple fancy electronic features in here. So you'll note that this gun has safe, semi, burst, and full auto. Typically, you only get semi and full auto. This gun also has a three round burst function built in. So it's not a feature you can easily add to a lot of guns without doing some serious tech work. So this is already gonna have it out of the box. That said, this gun isn't loaded, so it won't fire. This gun has a empty magazine detection that uh, will prevent you from shooting unless you do a couple of things, which is either manually uh, take out the magazine, press the, bolt, press the bolt release, and then you can pull the trigger. That'll allow you to clear jams if you have any, or if you're actually out of ammo, you insert a fresh magazine and you press the bolt release and it's ready to go again. That is accomplished by using strictly the mid-cap magazines, which interface with a little button inside that tells it that it's empty. If you use a high cap, you lose that function. Now, speaking of your magazine options, you have a standard mid cap that comes in the box with no loader, and it's gonna come with a 75 round capacity here. If you want some more capacity, there's a high cap available that holds 375 rounds, or you can use the ASG magazine coupler and put two of these together and you'll have double the capacity. Now this Evo BET comes with its own mock suppressor. It interfaces with an 18 millimeter positive thread, which is standard on all Evos. So whether I have the short one or the long one, the disassembly is gonna be the same. In order to install the battery, I gotta take off the suppressor. If I have the carbine, I have to take off the front uh, barrel piece. Or if I have to do it on the short version, I take off the little flash hider and the nut, and then that'll allow me to take off this handguard. On the carbine and BET, by the way, you get a extended brass 6.03 millimeter tight bore barrel. It's marked 407 millimeters there, so that's very cool. 
so you have that longer range with you. All right, to remove the handguard, now that I've freed it, I'm gonna carefully pull forward and I'm gonna keep my thumb here just as a technique to keep the charging handle from flying off. This isn't captured, so this could come out on you. And uh, some people have said, um, you know, they thought they broke it or something like that. No, it's just not captured. So slide it forward. And then this is where you could switch it to the other side if you wanted to. Like I said, it's not captured, so it just comes out, spring comes out. You'll put the bigger coil side in and the thinner, uh, smaller diameter side of the coils towards you and then, or towards the shooter. And then I'll put the charging handle and now this will allow me to swap it to the other side. Put that aside for now. Okay, so as far as every Evo goes, this part's gonna look the same. This is an 18 millimeter positive thread, like I said. And if you wanna add a 14 mil flash hider, that's typical of all airsoft guns, you'll have to get a thread adapter that ASG makes that turns it to a 14 millimeter counterclockwise. So I already have a battery installed here. You'll see that there's a beefy Dean's plug and the battery's in here. If you have a battery powered AK that uses a top cover style battery, such as an LCT or something like that, you're gonna have to use one of these because they're very small and thin profile. If you use something thicker, you might compromise the ability to uh, use the fake bolt and also bind other things. So not good. Speaking of which, you have this little metal sling loop here that's, you can, uh, that you can move to the other side if you like. This always gets lost, so when you take out the battery, be sure to keep an eye on this. When you first plug in the battery, you'll get a little bit of feedback from the gun, kind of like a low buzz. Uh, that's just to indicate that the battery is now powering the MOSFET. The only thing that's not ambidextrous, unfortunately, is the bolt release. It's one-sided, so you'll still have to hit this with either your left hand or your um, finger if you're able to reach that if you're lefty. Otherwise, the magazine release and the fire selector are going to be ambidextrous. The charging handle comes right hand configured, but you can switch it around. The magazine release is kind of like a paddle type that's ergonomic, so if you're used to the MP5, this works kind of the same way. The stock that comes with it is a folding stock. You fold it by pressing a button on the left side here, it folds. Now there's a slight hook to it right here and it hooks into the body. You have to just very gently push down on it and it'll lock. The plastic has give so that it allows you to do that. Do not force it in or out and it'll last longer. All right, it's in the lock position and you can also press this here and this will extend the length of pull. You got a QD socket here as well, it seems. Another cool feature is the quick release system for the spring guide. To access that, you gotta push the spring guide in, use a tool and slide the stock out. And then now you have access to swapping the spring out real quick. So if you're an indoor and outdoor player, you can go back and forth with it very easily, just get an extra spring. The motor inside is ASG's Infinity motor, so you have a really nice upgraded motor out of the box. Though I would say if you're gonna push for a higher FPS, you might have to change that up. But it's perfectly balanced for uh, up to outdoor normal FPS as well as indoor, and you have a good rate of fire with it. Lastly, in the box, you'll get some plastic sights that you can install. They don't come installed, but if you want to run them, you can put them, they're pretty low profile. Otherwise, you have all this top rail here that you can run an optic. The ATEC, Carbine and BET versions will have M-Lock handguards. The regular SMG will have Picatinny, but you can swap that over to um, ASG's factory M-Lock handguards as well as an option. You also have some magwell options too that you can run that allow you to load faster. There's gonna be one that's compatible for the mid cap or one with a wider flare that's meant for the ASG high cap. Another optional feature from ASG directly are these uh, speed triggers here. These are CNC Aluminum, they come in either silver or black. It does require a full takedown to install it, so you have to have professional install it or be really comfortable with some gearbox work. The trigger for the Scorpion Evo is actually very short and light for what it is. Uh, this just gives you a different angle and different feel to it, so very high quality piece. Okay, so that's everything that there is to know about the ASG Scorpion Evo. It is a pretty cool gun, tons of features. I would recommend this only to advanced players who are more careful with everything that they're doing because this is not something that's uh, user-friendly for a total beginner. 
That doesn't mean the gun's not good. This gun's actually quite awesome. It's just very tricky for a brand new player to grasp. All right, that does it for me today. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, we'll gladly make more videos that are going to feature other platforms. Just leave a comment or suggestion below in our comment section and be sure to subscribe, like, and follow. We really appreciate your feedback and also your uh, referrals. That's what helps us keep doing what we're doing. So thanks for your time. I'll catch you in the next video.